Hi, welcome to Stanley Creates. My name is Lauren Linehan, and today I'm gonna to show you how to paint with coffee. So coffee painting is actually a pretty old technique, and in the end, it kind of looks like watercolor. So you get different variations of the color or the hue of the color by adding varying amounts of water. So um, you can see here, I have an example. This is one that I did a couple days ago. I have some really light areas and some like darker areas and then some pretty dark areas. Um, <clears throat> and I got that all from different variations of water. So the lighter areas, I had more water to uh, coffee ratio, darker, more coffee to water ratio. So. Um, and then here's another one I did a couple days ago, too, where it's a little bit more abstract, but kind of fun. Yeah, so you can do you can do detail work with this. You can do more washy um, layers of color, um, things like that, too. So what I'm going to show you before we get started is all the different supplies that I have with me right now. So I have my watercolor paper down. I already have like a little splotch here drying just so I can show you a different technique later on. But I have my water paper... Uh, watercolor paper taped down to my surface. I tape my paper down because as you're adding water to the paper, the paper is going to want to fold and wrinkle and bend. Um, so taping it down kind of helps it stay flat. You definitely want to keep your painting taped down even while it's drying. So don't take the tape off until it's dry. I know it's tempting. I, uh, I get a little bit impatient. Um, but when it's done, you peel it off and you have this really nice clean edge around your artwork. Um, but just make sure that you keep it down. If you are if you don't have any watercolor paper with you and you just have regular paper, still do, uh, still tape down your paper. Um, and then when you, when it's dry, go to flatten it with some heavy books. But before you do that, make sure you wrap it in wax paper, just because even though it's dry, it's still going to be a little tacky. And if you you put a lot of weight on it, it's going to get stuck to that book or to the weights that you have on it. So just make sure that you put some wax paper down first and then um, press with weight. Okay, so I have my paper. It's all taped down. I am just using some good old instant coffee from the dollar, um, the dollar store. Uh, I use instant coffee rather than regular brewed uh, coffee with coffee grounds. The difference between instant coffee and regular coffee grounds is um, instant coffee dissolves in the water. So it essentially becomes part of the water. Um, regular coffee does not. it The grounds stay in the water. So if you're going to use regular brewed coffee, just brew a regular cup of coffee. Um, one thing that I will have you note, though, is that the the value of the coffee paint will be very, very, very light. So that will require a lot of um, patience. So doing a layer, letting that dry, doing another layer, letting that dry. Um, that's why I like the instant coffee because I can get different variations just from adding um, just a little bit of water here and there. So I actually have my darkest color here um, that I, I mixed. I literally put just like a, like a drop of water into some instant coffee and I got this kind of like paste. Um, it's pretty thick, um, but it works really well for detail work. Um, and then I have some other instant coffee here that I have yet to add water to, so I might go ahead and do that right now. So I'm just going to add just a little bit of water. This is going to be my lighter tone. So I want it to be lighter than my darkest color, um, which you might have to play around with it a little bit. And then one thing that I do have with me, I always try to keep an extra piece of paper nearby just so I can test out the different tones that I get. So this should be lighter than this tone. Let's just see. Right now what I'm creating is a value scale. So I'm trying to figure out what tones I have available to me right now. So I'm going to compare that next to my darkest tone. So I was going to grab some of that. I was going to put that over here. That is quite a difference. Isn't that kind of cool? Um, and then let's see what happens when I connect them with just regular water. So I'm cleaning out my brush. And then I'm just going to go ahead and go 
like this. Let's see what I can create if I just kind of connect them together. You can kind of see how the the instant coffee or the coffee, it reactivates when you add more water to it. Um, so let's see if I can get any any lighter tones. I wonder, I, I, th I think I want one that's just a little bit lighter. So I have, I have this container with just the smallest amount of instant coffee in it. So I might see what I can do. I'm gonna add some water. This will be a hint of color. <laughs> If any, I don't know if it's even gonna pick up on the camera. So let me go ahead and see here. Oh, you can barely see it. But that's awesome though. I like that color because you, you really can't see it on the screen, but um, it gives a good like starting point. So like if I'm, if I'm gonna be um, say painting a portrait or something, I can go ahead and start with this lighter color and then go in and add darker tones to it like around i'm not really drawing anything in particular you can add darker tones i guess i'm drawing a ball <laughs> and then if you wanted to you can go in with like detail and then add the detail with the the really fine or the really dark um pigment so so that's what I kind of like to do. So if you don't, if you've never tried doing like a, a value scale on the side before you start painting or drawing or whatever, I would suggest trying to do it just so you know that what you're going to be using. So you kind of get a feel for it, right? Um, so I'm going to dive into this. So I just have a few techniques. I'm not going to tell you what to do. Obviously that is your choice. Um, I wanted to do like dead or decaying leaves because I felt that the coffee paint was very similar to the color of dead leaves. And so that's that's where I went with that. Um, I also did, like I showed you earlier, um, this uh, abstract kind of piece just with some circles and kind of makes me think of bubbles. I'm not totally sure. Um, but I think your first one, you should just try to to play around. Don't get too worried about whether or not it looks perfect, what is perfect even, you know. Um, just like with watercolors, you kind of have to go with the flow, excuse the pun, um, because things will happen. Watercolors and coffee paint are kind of sporadic. Um, they're kind of spontaneous. So you might put a color down and then it'll bleed into another color and create something completely different. So you just kind of have to go with the flow with it. Um, I am just going to, show you just a few techniques that I think are kind of fun. One thing that I will note, and I have said it I think before, is that you just gotta play around. You have to experiment. You gotta figure out what is gonna work best for you and what um, techniques <laughs> you enjoy the look of. So I am going to, I'm gonna go ahead and put down some really dark, let me move that out of the way. Ooh, kind of splat down there. Um, really dark color down. Kind of spread it out. Just like that. Um, and then if you have paper towels nearby, which I would suggest you do, just because you want to make sure that you wipe off your, your paintbrush in between, um, you can take a paper towel and kind of use it like you would a sponge. You know, if you're doing sponge painting, you can press into it and get different kinds of techniques. You can even take the pointy end of like a another paintbrush. This one has a bit of a point to it and you can draw into it. You can draw into your coffee paint. I'm just going to keep going with the, the leaves here. A little bit more abstract. But you want to make sure that you're carving into it when it's wet. If you don't like what you made, the cool thing is you can just go over it. <laughs> um, you're gonna start new. And you can't really see any existence of the things that I did. Oh, a little bit maybe, but not too much. I think I just wanna carve into this one. Let's just see, I'm gonna.
it's fall. I'm feeling very connected with the dead and dying leaves. <laughs> kind of cool though isn't it like you this is called scraffito so when you take something and you you kind of carve into it um and i guess depending on like the i can turn my tool this way like you can have thicker tools or skinnier tools to carve into it's kind of fun it's all about playing around um so there are a couple techniques there. I think this one is almost dry enough, maybe, to show you another technique here. Um, I am gonna grab my, my paintbrush. I'm just gonna grab a paintbrush and just put water on it. I'm not gonna put any, any coffee on it. I'm just putting water on it. And I'm going to take that and I'm going to draw, or I guess paint across that just a few times here. So what I'm doing is I'm reactivating the coffee that's on the paper. And you can kind of see it working already. Um, what you can do is if I have a clean paper towel, It kind of worked. I think my my um, thing wasn't totally dry, but you can kind of see it kind of takes away the paper or that the paper, the paint. Um, I don't think I let mine dry totally, but you can, it worked over in this corner pretty well. Let's see if it worked. Let me try doing a dot up here. So maybe I'll be a little bit more intentional about how I place my paper towel. So instead of laying it all over, maybe I'll just do that. Yeah, it removes it pretty nicely. Yeah. Um, and then like I said earlier too, like if you have a nice like pointed brush or anything like that, you can use that with the dark, the darkest value that you've created to create. Um, you can do detail work. somewhat similar to that. So I hope that you um, are excited to try coffee painting and I hope that you enjoyed watching um, my my techniques um, and if you and I just hope that you have are inspired to go out and create whatever you want to. Um, thank you for joining Stanley Creates. My name is Lauren and have a wonderful day. Mm -hmm.